In this video, we're going to complete example two, and we're going to write down the earliest start times and latest start times in the diagram below. Some of you might recognize this network diagram from a previous video where Grant and his friends built a computer. The precedence table that goes with this network diagram is the one I'm showing here. However, you don't really need the precedence table to fill in the earliest and latest start times. So we like to start at the beginning of our project and we know that at the start our earliest start time is going to be zero. Then I would like to follow along activity B which takes one minute to complete. Activity B involves putting the CPU on the motherboard. So for our next vertex the earliest start time is one minute and the reason for that is activity D cannot start until one minute has passed, until the CPU has been put into the motherboard. Then we get to our next vertex here. Now there are two different paths we can take to get here. We can take the path along activity A, or we can take the path along activities B, then D. So we get two different earliest start times. If we go along activity A, it's only one minute. Zero plus one is one. So we have an option of one as our earliest start time. Or if we go along activities B then D, we get one plus three, which comes out to four minutes. So we have the option of writing down one minute or four minutes as our earliest start time. And we always pick the bigger number. So we're going to write down the four. So why do we pick the bigger number? Well, you might remember that Grant and his friends are building this computer. So you could have one friend completing activity A and another friend completing activities B and D. Activity E cannot start until all preceding activities are complete. So even though one friend might complete their activity in one minute, activity E still has to wait on the other friend who's going to take four minutes. So we put the larger time in here. Let's look at our next vertex here. Activity E takes 13 minutes and cannot start until four minutes into the project. Four plus 13 gives us 17 for our next vertex. And then moving on to our next vertex here, activity F only takes one minute. 17 plus one gives us 18. All right, we'll look at our vertex up here at the top. There's actually two paths we can take to get here. We can go along activity C, which takes 15 minutes, and we'll write that down as one of our options, an earliest start time of 15. The other path we can take is to go along here and then up through the dummy activity. In fact, there's actually more than two paths because you're either going through activity A, then up here, or you're going through activities B, then D, across and up here. So 18 plus 0 gives us 18. So our other option is an earliest start time of 18 and we always pick the bigger number so we're going to write 18 up here. Because this is a practical example I would like to talk about why we picked the number 18 in a practical context. Activity C involved someone driving down to the computer store and picking up a graphics card and it only took them 15 minutes to do that. So to move on to activity I, which is putting the graphics card into the computer, we can't do that until it's been picked up. The activities down here, activities A, B, D, E and F, all involved putting parts onto the motherboard and then putting the motherboard into the case, which took 18 minutes all up. Now you can't actually put the graphics card into the computer, which is activity I, until all of these activities have been completed, until the motherboard is in the case. So yes, it only takes 15 minutes to pick up the graphics card, but you can't install it until the motherboard has been put in the case, until 18 minutes has passed. So we take the larger number out of the two. All right, let's look at this vertex here. Activity G takes three minutes and cannot start until 18 minutes into the project. 18 plus three is 21. Looking at this vertex, 
Activity H cannot start until 18 minutes in the, into the project. 18 plus 4 is 22. And then we get to this vertex here, and there's quite a lot of paths that meet at this vertex. The one that goes along C, then I. The one that goes along here, and then goes up through G, then J, or through H, then K. So 18 plus 2 gives us 20. That's one of our options. So we have an option of 20 as our earliest start time, and we have two others. 21 plus 2 which gives us 23 as one of our options. And the third option, 22 plus 2, gives us an option of 24. So we write down our large number of 24. And then finally, activity L, which is where everything's been installed on the computer and we can screw the cover on the case, takes three minutes but it has to wait for at least 24 minutes before this can happen. So 24 plus 3 gives us 27 for our finish vertex. So the earliest time frame for completing this project is going to be 27 minutes, 27 minutes to build this computer. So we've finished doing all our earliest start times and we did it using the forward scanning method, which basically means we started at the start and worked our way forward to the finish. We're now going to find the latest start times and we're going to do that using the backward scanning method, meaning we start at the finish and work our way backward to the start. Now the finish vertex always has the same latest start time as its earliest start time. So we'll start there with 27. They should both be the same. In fact, if we look at our start vertex, it also has the same earliest and latest start time. So it's not going to hurt us to fill that one in now with a zero. Now if we move back to this vertex here, we know that activity L takes three minutes to complete. So it needs to start at least three minutes before the completion of the project. So we're going to write down 24 in this vertex because 27 minus 3 gives us 24. Let's look at this vertex now. Activity K takes 2 minutes to complete. 24 minus 2 gives us 22. Activity K cannot start any later than 22 minutes into the project. Otherwise, we're going to delay the next activity and then the entire project. Let's now look at this vertex. 24 minus 2 gives us 22. So we know that activity J cannot start any later than 22 minutes into the project, otherwise the next activity is going to start later than it should do, and then delay the project. You can see that you've got this one minute window. It can start as early as 21 minutes into the project, or as late as 22 minutes. Let's now move on to our vertex here at the top. Activity I takes 2 minutes. 24 minus 2 gives us 22. So activity I has quite a decent window here. It's got a 4 minute window. It can start as early as 18 minutes or as late as 22 minutes. This vertex here has quite a few paths it can take. It can go this way, this way, or this way. So there's about three different edges that connect here. 22 minus 0 is 22. So we have a latest start time of 22. Another option is 22 minus 3, which gives us 19. And then the third option, 22 minus 4, which gives us 18 as our latest start time. So we have three options here. But for backward scanning, we use the smallest number. So we need to use the latest start time of 18. So why do we pick the smaller number? Well, let's look at what would happen if we picked, let's say, the 19. If we left 19 minutes into the project, 19 plus 0 gives us 19. And that's fine. It's OK to start activity I earlier than 22 minutes into the project start at 19, that would work. If we go in this direction, 19 plus 3 
gives us 22. So that lands right on there and we can start activity J 22 minutes into the project. That's fine. 19 plus 4, however, gives us 23. And we can see that this is going to delay our project by one minute, which we don't want to happen. All right, let's now look at this vertex here. 18 minus 1 is 17. So our latest start time is 17. 17 minus 13 is 4. Our latest start time is 4. And 4 minus 3 gives us 1. So we have 1 here. And as we said before, the start vertex always has a latest start time of 0. So we've now written down all our earliest start times and latest start times. We haven't quite finished the question because it also asked us for the earliest time frame to complete the project. And the earliest time frame for this is 27 minutes. So we'll write down that the earliest time frame to complete the project is 27 minutes. Anyway, that concludes example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.